Well, hello. For this short video clip, I want to bring out one situation that happened. It was an interesting insight and an interesting story from my time at the uh, uh, 4TAC fighter wing and flying the, uh, the F-4s. And uh, we had one squadron mate who was uh, in the airplane and he was out flying a night mission out over in Whiskey 102, which is a uh, warning area off the east coast of the United States over the, uh, the ocean. And it was later in the evening. What was interesting is that in the midst of that particular training sortie that they were flying, the aircraft had a total electrical problem, a failure. So all of the electrics in the airplane went out. And what they didn't realize at the time was that meant that a couple of the fuel valves that were feeding fuel to the, uh, to the engines uh, went out. And so the amount of fuel they had to work with was a lot less. But they also had no lights. They didn't have instruments because their, uh, the, the lighting for their instruments was not there. It was, a, it was the middle of the night at this time. I think it was like about 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. And it, so it was a challenging time. Well, the, uh, the pilot saw some lights off in the distance and thought it was his flight lead. So he went after him, lit the burner to go after him to see if he could join up on him. Well, it turned out to be an airliner and it was going in the opposite direction of where the base was. And what happened was basically the airplane ran out of gas. Both engines flamed out in the middle of the, uh, well, not the middle of the Atlantic, but over the Atlantic in the middle of the night, both crew members had to eject. Unfortunately, the pilot was never found, and that was uh, uh, not a good uh, uh, thing to remember. But the backseater uh, actually ejected, and he came down. He uh, uh, came down in the water, pulled into his one-man uh, life raft, and to make a long story short, he uh, he was trying to pull his survival kit into the raft with him. And in his words. A giant fish was fighting him for the survival kit and winning. And so he had to pull out a survival knife and kind of cut the lanyard so the fish didn't pull him under the water with them. And what was interesting is while he was there alone in a single man life raft in the Atlantic Ocean and without survival gear, he had to uh, stay there and be okay until somebody could rescue him. They did a search and rescue effort that lasted, if I remember correctly, for about seven or eight days. And because the currents had pushed him off the course for where they expected him, they never found him. And they called off the search and rescue effort. And about two days after the situation, after they called it off, it just so happened that without a food, out of everything, being weak, a freighter was going by and uh, this uh, crewman stood up in his one man life raft and was kind of waving his hands to try to get attention and he lost his balance and fell into the water into the ocean well the lookouts on the freighter did not see him waving but they just happened to look over at the right time to see the splash as he fell into the water and they sent a survival boat over to investigate and they rescued him and, and pulled him into the uh, 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 freighter after being alone in the Atlantic Ocean for about the last 10 to 12 days without food, without survival gear or anything like that. I just want to kind of throw out one thing that what they said was in the interview of this uh, uh, team member, um, when they were interviewing him after the, the situation, one of the questions they asked him was simply this, what were you doing when the lookout spotted you? And his answer, I'll never forget, his answer said simply this, he said, I was buttoning up for the night. Let me ask you and leave you with this question. When you have the strangest situation that you would have never predicted coming on scene, what is your team pick up from you in both your verbal and nonverbal communication? What do they get a sense from you? Do they get a sense that you're, you have confidence in them regardless of kind of what's going on? Maybe it's kind of a bad situation right now. It may turn good in a little bit. You may have unexpected things that come in to help you out. But what does your team get from you? When you talk about you being their leader, what must you do differently 
in leading the team through challenging situations? Are you calm at the point of attack? Are you calm when there doesn't seem to be any successful outcomes yet? Do they see that you have confidence of what's going on? Do they have a sense that when they stay engaged, you're leading the confidence, the courage, and the ability to take on the challenge and do it successfully as a team? Do they get a sense for that? Or do they get a sense that you're just kind of attacking them because it didn't go the way you wanted? So I just simply leave that with you today. As you think about your leadership and challenging events and challenging teams that you could not have possibly predicted when you talk about this rapidly changing environment, what do you need to do differently as a leader? What, do your, what does your team need to experience differently from you, the leader? I leave that with you for this week.